Greetings everyone, I'm Pastor David and I just want to welcome you to this segment of uh, True Seekers TV here on YouTube. And uh, uh, today we're going to go into the, uh, the essentials of God as they are concerned with Gateway Ministries. Uh, what he's put on our heart to bring forth as a message of uh, encouragement, of hope, and of, of course, healing. Um, for myself personally, uh, just to give a bit of a testimony, as I, I, I usually insert a part of my journey in the message, but just to start off, um, I began my walk with the Lord in a way that um, was very crucial. I had survived a 20-year career in the military as a combat engineer, and in those 20 years, I was uh, extremely traumatized within my mind and in my physical body. And through the grace, the glory, the love, the mercy of God, he met me where I was, and I was uh, introduced to Jesus Christ in the most amazing way. And in my journey of the last 15 years, I have been blessed to gain uh, some knowledge that uh, has really helped me uh, be the victor in Christ that I know we're supposed to be. And so it is my desire, it is my passion to share the things of the Word of God that can help those who are troubled within their minds. And, you know, the, the, we know, we've heard so many messages about the battle being within our minds. And that Satan so wants to, to cause us to think in ways that would cause us to be sick. That our physical bodies would pay the price for worrying, for fear. The trauma that was in my mind was so severe that uh, uh, to be standing here before you today is just, uh, I, I praise God. I thank Him continually. I, I really do pray without ceasing. I thank him without ceasing based on all the things that he has done within my mind to get me to where I am today. And that it is such a passion within me to share and to be part of Gateway Ministries that he has given me uh, somewhat of a blueprint to his glory. Uh, that those who are gathering together to uh, bring forth a truth, a message that can inspire us to, to have a really good day, even in the most darkest of dark that we are coming out of this uh, victorious and that uh, those that are watching this right now would, would learn and understand what this ministry stands for. <clears throat> and what we stand for is everything from the kingdom message that will bring us to unity and that we would be united with ourselves to God, uh, resurrected to a place of um, reconciliation with God through Jesus Christ, that it would lead to us want to be reconciled both to God within ourselves and to others. And so with that, um, let me just open in prayer, and I uh, will be giving bits and pieces of my testimony throughout, because I know uh, it stands for a lot when it comes to the message of the kingdom, and for what the kingdom has done within me, and how it's brought me to this place to bring forth Gateway Ministries. So Father, right now I just thank you for this moment. I give you all the praise and honor and glory, Father. We love you, we adore you. We most certainly need you in this time, and we lay ourselves at your feet. We thank you, Jesus, for the, the, the cross, the blood, the resurrection. We thank you, Lord Jesus, as our mediator. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for being here with us to help guide us through this message. And we're just so grateful towards you, Father, that for this day, we will, uh, we will see Satan get behind us, that he is rebuked by you, Father, and that our minds will be made clear through what you will serve to us today. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. If you have your Bibles, turn to Hosea 4, verse 6. I'm just going to give some, uh, some scriptures that we love... I love to build a foundation, and now that foundation has to be built in love, saints. We can do nothing, nothing, nothing without the understanding of love. And anything that's within our minds that is taking us to a place where we do not understand love, or we cannot um, uh, live in that way of love, then we, we want to deal with that. And if you're one that's watching this right now, and you're just at a place in your life, your walk, you may be just coming to Christ, just a newly born again, you may be an atheist. You may be one who sat under the Lord for 30 years, and you've been saved, but you just haven't seen much victory. Well, what I'm going to go over now is just the base foundation of, of what we do uh, for the Lord, how the Lord uses us to bring um, clarity to the saints and to those who are going to grow to be a saint. Um, I've had you turn to Hosea 4, verse 6, where it's quite clear the Lord said, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, I also will reject you from being priests for me. Now I could go on and on in that scripture. It's very direct. 
And it is, it is a sign to us today, you know, all scripture, all scripture, everything that the Lord has brought forth in his word is for us today. We can find Jesus in every part of the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. And, and the important part of what he says here is that my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And I know for myself personally, as I walk through this journey, that it was in the lack of knowledge that I made some really bad decisions in my life, both as a non-believer and as a believer. And I want to get to a place where I start making the right decisions. And so with that, the Lord again has given me somewhat of a blueprint or some guidance for myself and as I share with others to, uh, to use as a source. You know, heaven being our source, we being the vessels for the Holy Spirit, our resource to those around us, that we can provide a way out. Uh, both for ourselves and for those around us. You know, everything in the Lord's prayer is plural. Our Father, right off the bat. And so we stand for one another, which is that total unity that's required to, uh, to bring forth a way, a, a way that we are here to prepare the way for the Lord. And I've learned that. And I just so want to share that with all those that have gathered um, in the gatherings to, to come to that clarity. If you turn to Psalm... 133, Psalm 133, verse 1, even David, a man after God's own heart, produced a word that has forever been with me since I came to Christ. In Psalm 133, verse 1, David wrote, Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. And so, the whole essence, the essentials of God for us today as the body of Christ is to, as you're about to see, understand the kingdom of God and, and through a series of events of, of assistance to us through the word of God, we will come to a place of unity. So with that, we have, um, we have David, again, a man after God's own heart, explain to us how, behold, behold. How good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. And so for me personally in my journey, I have been so <laughs> amazed at God to see how his desire is that we all come together in the body of Christ as one. As we learn with uh, John 17, where we get to see Jesus speaking to his Father in heaven, and he has explained to them in John 17, 21, how he so desires that we would be one as they are one. And I can then go to James and all these combinations of scriptures and harmonizing the scriptures where James wrote, you know, that, that God does not like a double-minded man. And so we have this opportunity to be single-minded within ourselves. And when that happens, I know that I know within, within ourselves we would want to be one with all those around us. Because everything with God and the family of God is about relationship. God wants relationship with us. And that with that, as we learn this, we want relationship with one another. I know for myself, I could not grow. I could not come to where I am today without going into relationships. I know that when I first got out of the military and I was suffering with post-traumatic stress disorder, I just wanted to hide away. I wanted to get a cabin down by a lake and just stay there for the rest of my life. I'm just going to love on the Lord, stay there. I don't have to move forward. I don't have to do anything. Just be with my father. And um, it just wasn't going to be that way. I was uh, led into places where there was lots of people and I would learn so much about myself and the areas that I needed to be delivered in so that I could progress forward in the ways that I know God would want. For it's the Christ in me, the Christ in us, that is our destiny. And so it's important for us to understand who we are in Christ. That's what leads us to this beauty, to the pleasantness of being united with, with each other. And so we know that, um, let's turn to Ephesians 4, please. And Ephesians 4 is such a powerful scripture uh, about unity. And how, you know, the Lord had put it on Paul's heart to write such amazing words um, that, that, that explain so much to us. And I, I'm not going to go into much detail because this is a, a, um, a, a introduction to Gateway Ministries and the areas that the Lord has us minister in um, to, to grow, to develop 
into a place of greater understanding within ourselves first to come to those relationships with those around us. That we would not so much be denominated, but we would become united as the body of Christ. Let's read Ephesians 4. We'll start at verse 11. Now, this is essential. This is essential to understand. And he himself, this is Ephesians 4 verse 11, and he himself gave some to be apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. These are callings and offices of the kingdom of God on this earth, which we will get into in later segments. It's just an introduction right now. Why do we have these fivefold ministry groupings? For the equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, until we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. This is so powerful, saints, to understand. You see, we all have been given the ministry of reconciliation, 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17 and 18. You know, it, it, we are reconciled to God through Jesus Christ. That's the born-again experience. And then we're led by the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Spirit, to conduct ourselves in a way that we would look outside of ourselves, right? It's that whole concept of giving that we get from heaven as our source through me, Lord, that he can have this vessel. He can enjoy this vessel right here to work through my mind and to direct me, to guide me, to lead me, to give all the things that he's given within me, to share with others, no matter, no matter what it may be. Why? For the edifying, for the equipping of the saints that we would all come. What did he say? Until we all come to the unity of the faith. And the faith is knowing that Jesus Christ is within us. So let's journey now into, uh, into the, uh, the five parts of this teaching that the Lord has blessed us to have. That in sequence, as we understand these things, in the areas that we go into, it helps to renew the spirit of our minds. Amen. And in renewing the spirit of our minds, we start to understand who we are. And we're not so troubled anymore. And we're not just walking in a born-again state. But we're walking in a born-again way that we are victorious in all that we do. No matter how dark it is around us. For this ministry at Gateway Ministries is all about preparing each other. Preparing ourselves for what is about to happen. You can go on many uh, TV shows right now, both secular and Christian. And everybody's talking about the upheavals on the earth. And that's, that's, that's prophetic. That's that's stated in many of the books of the Bible, from Ezekiel, Daniel, the book of Revelation. Everybody's starting to see these things. The word of God is becoming clear. Daniel said that knowledge would increase in these days. And that's what's happening. And it's so powerful that we here who are alive today ha have these words, these messages coming. But we, you know, for me personally, in Matthew 24, 14, I'm paraphrasing, but Jesus said, it's not because of an event that he's coming back to, to rapture us or catch us away. It's because we minister the kingdom of God. Okay? So, in keeping with that, the very first topic, the very first portion of teaching the Lord has put on my heart to bring forth is the message of the kingdom of God. And so with that, um, what we have is, uh, is, is a, a title. The title the Lord gave to me is Rediscovering the Kingdom of God and Heaven. We are rediscovering the kingdom of God in heaven. So let's turn to, uh, uh, we don't really have to turn there. Matthew chapter 3 verse 2 and Matthew 4 17. We find John the Baptist and Jesus. And the first words that come out of their mouth in ministry, as they are called to serve those around them was, Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Beautiful. Repent. What we're going to learn about the word repentance, if you don't already know, is that we are going to change our thinking. And in changing our thinking, the kingdom of heaven can be received. I always say this about ministry or any kind of work that we do for the Lord. We cannot create that. Many have just gone out and created it. I have gone out personally and created ministry and it didn't work. But when I receive ministry, when I receive that calling from the Lord, that's when we start to see the fruit of it. For as Jesus said, I cannot do anything of myself. I can only do what my, I see my Father doing. We are no different. And so John the Baptist stands before these men and women who have lived a very religious life up until the time they meet him. And what does he say? He says, repent. Change your thinking from that of a religious way to that of a liberated way to know that the Messiah is here. 
And then Jesus himself comes forward and his ministry begins. And he says the same in Luke 4, 17. He says, or sorry, in Matthew 4, 17, he says, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And what's even greater than that, if you turn to Matthew, uh, 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 yeah, Matthew 4, in the same, in the same uh, chapter, in the same chapter, we're going to find how uh, Jesus says something so amazing. Um, we'll just read Matthew four seventeen again. From the from that time, Jesus began to preach and to say. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. As I've already said, it is so amazing that in this day, 2,000 years later, that message is still prevalent. For anything that we're facing that is troublesome to us started in our minds. And I've journeyed and sought and looked and dug and dug and dug, and the Lord has blessed me so much with His grace and mercy to see the things that He would want us to see. And it's all about our thoughts, saints. There's many messages out there right now. There's powerful men and women of God on TV right now and going out into the big coliseums and ministering the same message that the thought process of who we are is so imperative because as in 1 Thessalonians 5.23, um, Paul wrote we, that we are a spirit with a soul and a body. And what you're going to learn through this teaching is that what our spirit man thinks our soul and body are going to do. And so it is very powerful for us to get to a place to understand that if our spirit man is polluted by Satan and he has trained us to be sick, right? There is a way out. There is an answer. There is a solution. I'm always praying for that. Lord, a solution. Lord, a remedy that can only come from you. And we'll wait on you and we'll praise you and we'll worship you in the hopes and faith that the Christ in me is going to receive that answer. And there will be deliverance. Saints, you're going to learn with this message of the kingdom how powerful it is. Turn to Luke 4. I'm going to go to Luke 4 and verse 43. Luke 4, verse 43. I'm going to show you two important scriptures about the kingdom. If I took you back, as you're turning there, I can take you back to Matthew 6, 33, where Jesus says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be added unto you. Saints, I, I love it. Let the word, let us build this foundation of love. That we love you, Father. We seek you, Father. I'm seeking him every day. For there's people around me who are so troubled. There's things that Satan tries to put into my mind to slow me down, to bring me down. I say, no, Satan, get thee behind me. Look at Luke 4, 43. But he said to them, Jesus said to them, I must preach the kingdom of God to the other cities also, because for this purpose I have been sent. The whole purpose of Jesus coming, 100% man, 100% God on this earth, was to preach the kingdom. Look at, let's go back to Matthew 24. I know I've already said this earlier. We're just going to go through the scriptures. Why not, saints? Why not? They don't lie. The scriptures don't lie. Let every man be a liar. Let, the, let God be the truth. Matthew 24 and verse 14. It's the Olivet, uh, uh, the Olivet Disclosure. It's the disclosure of, of this end time of the church that the Lord has brought forth through his disciples to, uh, to bring to us a truth of what to be prepared for. And Jesus says, And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. He talks about all these calamities, upheavals, things that will happen on the earth. Sicknesses, pestilence, earthquakes, tornadoes. Yes, they're terrible. Many people have suffered for these things. But it's not because of those events that he comes back, saints. It's because we chose within ourselves. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations. And then the end will come. So I know within myself as I stand before you that this message, as you'll see throughout all my YouTube messages, it's both for the saints now and for those left behind. I've been promised by God that it will assist those. That's what urges me on. That's what the Holy Spirit leads me to do is to stand before you and present this truth. 
both to the saints now and for those that will be left behind. For this Bible will still be here once we've been caught up in rapture. And many are believing right now that the rapture, the, 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 the coming of the Lord to the east and the sky with all the angels with him to call us up, to bring us up to him, to go to the third heaven for seven years. While <laughs> the great tribulation is released on this earth, there's still a few things that have to happen, saints. I won't get into that now, but there's still some prophetic words that come forth that we know have not come to fruition yet, and that's what we're waiting to see. And we're not sending our watch. We know all that. Not even Jesus knows when he's coming to bring us home. It could happen any second now. But at the same time, I could die any second now. He's the author and the finisher of my faith. He's the Alpha and the Omega. He's the beginning and the end. He knows when my heart's going to stop. I don't. I don't even care for that. Because I will be here until my job is done. I am in the will of God. I am preaching his kingdom. Right off the bat, the very starting point of this ministry is to preach the kingdom. Look at Acts 28. So we get our eyes off the things that are happening. We're aware of the things that are happening on the earth, but that's not the important point. The important point is that we preach the kingdom. Look at Acts 28, what Paul was doing at the end of his ministry. Is, this is how the book of Acts ends. And it's very, very rarely is it spoken of, but I love it. I love it. It's so encouraging. Therefore, Acts 28, or sorry, yeah, Acts 28, verse 28. Therefore, let it be known to you that the salvation of God has been sent to the Gentiles and they will hear it, exclamation mark. Praise God, I heard it. And when he had said these words, the Jews departed and had a great dispute among themselves. That's a whole other message. Here's the meat of what I'm trying to put forth here. Then Paul dwelt two whole years in his own rented house and received all who came to him, preaching the kingdom of God and teaching the things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence, no one forbidding him. Praise Jesus. You can't stop this message. It's awesome. I just, in part, I pray, I declare that there's those that are watching this right now that will be so uplifted to, to bring forth the message of the kingdom as you've learned it, as you've seen it, as it has been imparted to your spirit man that your soul and body, your members, want to get out into the world and bring the message of the kingdom. Bring the message of the kingdom. Paul, preaching the kingdom of God and teaching the things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ. The man who wrote half the New Testament who spoke in tongues. He spoke in tongues so much. Well, God just poured into this vessel. He had this vessel. He wants this vessel. He wants my mind. But Satan wants my mind too. Satan wants to pollute my mind. Satan wants to capture my mind. He wants to lasso my mind. We've all read the book, The Bait of Satan. It's an awesome book. It's all about offense. Satan wants to put a stronghold in our mind that when we're offended, we would break off all ties with those who offended us. When God says, in the, in the real way, we would want to bless them. And when you know who you are in Christ, Galatians 2.20, please. Galatians 2.20 is a powerful scripture. As we progress forward, you're going to hear Galatians 2.20 a lot. It, it, it just marinate our minds in the Word of God. Build that foundation of love within our minds, saints. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Galatians 2.20, Paul wrote, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer... It is no longer I who live. That's why he said in 1 Corinthians 15, I die daily. We get up in the morning. Be my rudder. Be my sail, Lord. Guide me, Lord. It doesn't matter. If you have an eight-hour-a-day job and you're out there working amongst the world, you, you get up in the morning you say to the Lord, I'm dying today. I'm dying to self today so that the crucifixion, that I was crucified. I was there with Christ when he was crucified. I was there with him. And he resides in me and I reside in him. And I'm going forth into this world. That I'm not of this world, but the Lord wants me in this world as he directs my path. To the places of the world he wants me to go. To bring the message of the kingdom. To represent the kingdom. Galatians 5. You're right there anyway. The fruit of the Spirit. This is what the kingdom of God looks like, saints. This is what we're going to go to. I'm not here to beat people up over sin. Sin means you're missing the mark. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Trespass, trespass means we went into a place we don't belong. Now, I'm not belittling it. I'm not demeaning it. And we do have the grace of God. 
And we do have, under the grace of God, we have the blood of Jesus. We are under the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. We are protected and provided for. But my God, Philippians 4.19, but my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Why? Because the Christ Jesus in me. See the kingdom message. John, or it was it John 17? Um, uh, let's, uh, or, or was it, uh, uh, I don't want to lie to you here. We just did Galatians 2.20. Let's just quickly go to, uh, uh, I believe it's Luke 17 and 21. Let's just quickly go there. Let's start at verse 20, Luke 17, verse 20. Now when he, Jesus, was asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, Jesus answered them and said, the kingdom of God does not come with observation. Nor will they say, see here or see there, for indeed the kingdom of God is within you. The kingdom of God is within us. When we said yes to Jesus, come into my heart. Whether you did it by a sinner's prayer or you're somewhere like me. I was out in the wilderness in the deserts of Iraq when I got born again. I heard this loving voice come through me in amongst all this carnage. Getting ready to clear landmines with all these men that I was responsible for. Didn't know what, I didn't know how to give up. I didn't know what to do. I thought I was, any day now I was like being on death row. And I didn't know who to call out to. I didn't know anything but this beautiful, beautiful voice came through me and said, I love you. Follow me. I'll lead you out of here. And to this day, saints, as I stand before you with this word, I followed him. John 10, my sheep hear my, sheep hear my voice. I need to hear his voice. Man wants us to hear their voice. No, I need to hear the, she the shepherd's voice. I'm his sheep. I belong to him. 1 Corinthians 12, 3 says that no one can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. The whole message of the kingdom involves the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit residing in us. It's the authoritative, sovereign power of God residing in us. Think on these things, saith the Lord. When we think on these things and we know these things in our minds, and we know them to be true, factual truth, nothing of Satan can come against us. And I'm telling you right now, the only place that he can attack us is in our mind. But when we build up on this truth of the message of the kingdom, the kingdom of God resides in us. Who can come against that? It's a knowledge, it's a resource within us that is so powerful. That Satan will flee. Let me remind you, saints, that Satan is not equal with God. God is almighty. He's El Shaddai, God Almighty. He's Jehovah Jireh, the God who supplies all things. He's Jehovah Shalom. He's the God of peace. Satan was Lucifer. His peers were Michael and Gabriel, saints, not God. And because of his fall, Michael and Gabriel still hold the authoritative power of archangels. Hallelujah. Satan has fallen. He's an evil, despicable, unclean spirit that tries to get into our minds to get us to do our own will, as what he did with Eve and then Adam. And as with Adam, when he ran because he was naked and hid behind the tree, and God comes into the scene and says, Adam, where are you? Adam says, I'm here behind this tree. And then God says, why are you hiding behind the tree? He says, I'm naked. And the most powerful words in that whole time frame, that realm of conversation is, God says to Adam, who told you you were naked? You who have cancer, who told you you have cancer? You who have a tumor, who told you you have a tumor? You who have jealousy, hate, envy, and strife, who told you that? That's not of God. Sickness is not of God. It is of the enemy. And if we participate with the enemy, guess what? There is dire results. Saints, I totally believe in the grace message. I've heard it. I've heard it. It's, it is all over the world right now. There are whole TV stations made out of the grace message. But let us be careful, saints. I'm not trying to add to or take away. But I know through experience and the ones that I am called to be with, that they understand the grace message. They understand the mercy of God. But still in their minds, they participate with fear, anxiety, stress, which is causing their soul and their bodies, especially their bodies, to deteriorate at a quicker rate than normal. I believe we have an answer. I believe we have a solution. I know for myself personally, there's things in, within me that are changing so quickly. I've had a problem with lust for food for too long. I confess that. I don't care who hears this. I confess before my, my, my saint peers and God himself, as you can see.
but I'm dealing with that. As I minister this, I'm dealing with that within me. We are all working towards perfection. We're all in this together, saints. Pray for me. Pray for a divine revelation that I wouldn't find comfort in food and not the Lord Jesus Christ. It is a disease that Satan imparts into our minds to say, he's not enough, go to the fridge. That may sound comical, saints, but there's such a truth to it because obesity is killing North America. Obesity is taking over, it's rampant. And it's because of lust. I need it now, I want it now. What I have in this word is, I don't understand it enough, so it's not enough. And what we do at Gateway Ministries, we teach, we teach, we teach. We impart, we impart. What does the word say? What does the word say in this matter? If you're suffering with fear, what does 2 Timothy 1.7 say? Let's go there real quickly. Kingdom Scriptures. Kingdom Scriptures, saints. 2 Timothy verse, uh, chapter 1, uh, verse 7. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. For God has not given us a spirit of fear. Satan is a spirit of fear. He is so fearful because he knows that the end of what his time is is called the lake of fire and brimstone. He knows he's going there and he knows his time is short. So he wants to impart into those, especially those led of the spirit. When Jesus was led of the spirit, guess who met him in the wilderness? And it was a thought. It was a thought that Satan put into his mind. Therefore, we know that thoughts are not sin because Jesus was sinless. But this thought came into his mind. These enticing temptations of Satan into our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ's mind. And how, what did he do? He said, no, it is written. So those who are dealing with fear right now can honestly look within themselves and say, I do not have the spirit of fear. I have the Christ in me. I have been crucified with Christ. Therefore, I have the faith of Jesus Christ in me, which is the total opposite of fear. I have power, I have love, and I have a sound mind. Praise be to God. Praise be to God that we have a sound mind. For those who keep their minds on the Lord will be in perfect peace. And we learn that. We're going to retrain ourselves. Rediscovering the kingdom of God means we're going to retrain ourselves. That Satan has trained us for too long on how to be sick. We're going to retrain our minds, our spiritual minds, renewing the spirit of our minds with Ephesians 4. To not be sick. It's not that God didn't want to heal us or anything like that. He never intended us to be sick in the first place. Then we live out our lives in our spirit, soul, and body perfectly whole. Going from grace to grace, mercy to mercy, from glory to glory. That is the message of the kingdom, saints. That is what the kingdom looks like. And to go even deeper than that, the Lord has blessed us to know that... Um, Let's quickly turn to Romans 8, verse 11. And I'm only spending a little bit of time on these different topics because there's so much more to follow this. And what I'll be doing is doing up booklets and, and training packages and study guides on all the topics he's given me. And what I'm going to do before I go into the next heading, let's just quickly look at Romans 8, verse 11. Romans 8, verse 11. Listen to this, saints. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That, that is so much truth there, saints. That is what we know to be true. The same spirit that, that supernaturally impregnated Mary to have Jesus Christ, the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in us as a kingdom citizen. Philippians 3.20 Paul wrote, you are a citizen of heaven. We are ambassadors for Christ on this earth, for his kingdom. So there's the five parts that I said that we uh, deal with at Gateway Ministries. The first one being, as I've already talked about, is rediscovering the kingdom of God. I am so amazed. I am so encouraged. I'm so blessed to be in the position I'm in. Because I've seen this truth and I just want to share it with everybody. Let's rediscover the kingdom of God in heaven. The second area we go into to, to enhance the image within our spiritual minds of what the kingdom looks like, the Lord took me to Nehemiah. And in Nehemiah chapter 3, we get the instruction on the gates of Nehemiah. 
that's the next topic I'm going to go into, just to give you a, a, a quick synopsis, a quick small covering of what we teach here and what you can be ready for. The third area we go into is understanding that we no longer come under a generational curse, that we come under generational blessings. So it's through the knowledge and gaining the knowledge of the kingdom of God and gaining the knowledge of what it looks like in Nehemiah 3, the ten gates of Nehemiah. It's our spiritual journey, our spiritual walk, that we see where we are in this walk. What has been hindering us? What has been holding us back? Those that want to stay where they are, fine. But this message is for those who know they're sick and want to get healed. They've looked at it this way. They've looked at it that way. Nothing seems to be working. Well, we, we present this truth in an area that is a, a remedy or a solution. And we've seen many come to a place of greater knowledge. And it's through the knowledge. Remember what he said in Hosea 4, 6. My people. He said, my people. Not the world. My people are perishing for lack of knowledge. So in knowing Nehemiah chapter 3 especially, where we get the ten gates, we also incorporate Hebrews chapter 6 verse 1 and 2, which is the doctrines of Jesus Christ, the principles, there's six of them, of Jesus Christ that leads us to a healing, to a greater understanding that brings us to healing. And as, as a quick enticement, the fact that we quickly lay hands on people and pray for them, if they do not have the knowledge that they have to repent from dead works, laying on of hands isn't going to help. The answer to the question, what happens if prayer doesn't work? Let's be honest with ourselves. Let's be truthful with ourselves. We know grace. We know mercy. But we also know Proverbs 25 too, which says, it's the glory of God to conceal a matter. It's the glory of his kings to search out that matter. I'm not a psychiatrist. I'm not a psychologist. I'm just one who's experienced the, the onset of a mind that was so polluted by Satan through the death and carnage and the, the, the agony of evil that's out in the world that I had to visit. And I brought it home with me to one of the most peaceful countries in the world, Canada. And I just wasn't worthy of anything. I met the Lord on the battlefield and I brought, I, he brought me home safely and I, I was so attacked in my mind. I was living a very, very poor life in, in the Lord. And I'm just starting to get things back now. I'm just starting to recuperate now. So I stand with you. And I'm not here to judge anybody. Because if I judge people, I'm going to be judged. There's a lot of that going on, saints. It's not good. So with the gates of Nehemiah, we'll see that. If you're judging someone, those who have cancers, those who have tumors, those who are always getting hurt in their flesh, there is an answer to that, saints. We can find that answer. We can find that solution. And after we go through the gates of Nehemiah, again, in Hebrews 6, verse 1 and 2, which I'm going to go into, we have what's called the going from generational curses to generational blessings as we grow in our knowledge. That each and every one of us that are watching this right now, I'm telling you, we started out under a curse. We were all brought up into evil. And there's more than anything, no condemnation, parents who failed, including me, to raise our children in the way that they should go. I wasn't raised in the way that I should go. Great evidence of that. I love my mom and dad, but I have a father now. I've been adopted into the royal family. The Bible, the Holy Bible, is a book about God's kingdom, his king, the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and us, the royal family. That's what the Bible's all about. It's not supposed to be broken off into segments so we can form our own religions and kingdoms and denominations. It's about bringing us to the, to the total unity in Christ. And so by understanding the kingdom of God, Understanding the kingdom of God resides in us. And what does that look like? Well, one of the greatest teaching methods he's given me is, is Nehemiah chapter 3, the ten gates, which I'm going to get into in a minute. And with that knowledge, we start to walk in victory through the generational blessings of a king who just wants to bless us. And the fourth area is we will be, we will be hungry for unity. We will understand how important it is that we're united. Because of the kingdom message, it's what G brings Jesus to the sky, where his Father in heaven taps him on the back and says, go get my kids. It's because God himself has witnessed us preparing the way of the Lord through bringing the message of the kingdom. Matthew 24, 14. That it was the purpose of Jesus Christ to preach the kingdom. And when we understand the kingdom of God, that we're all citizens of heaven... We will not want anything to hinder us from being one. That we won't tuck ourselves away in buildings spotted all through the cities, doing our own thing, working our own things out, that we will want. And I know this may sound bold, saints, but pff, honestly, I'm here to please God. And man benefits. I'm not coming against any man. I'm not against any man. 
I love everyone. I love myself for the Christ in me, and I love everyone. Whether you've got the Christ in you or not, there's hope for everybody. We bless those who curse us and despitefully use us. We come alongside them as the Holy Spirit comes alongside of us. The comforter, the paraclete in Greek. He doesn't come at us. I don't want to come at anybody. I used to. I don't want to anymore. I used to have anger and rage. Why aren't we united? I get angry. I get mad at my, my fellow pastors and, and get angry and, and, and fight or flight. Even with the closest relationships in my life, saints, I do not, I do not mind divulging this at all because it's through that confession. It's the truth that sets us free. I have nothing to hide. Many will try to find things within all of us to expose us. Well, go ahead. It's a demonic work. Each and every one of us have an awesome opportunity to know who we are in Christ. And it's through these methods that the Lord's given to me personally that to God be the glory. As a vessel, if he can use me, let's do it. And all those that have gathered around, all of us who gather together at Gateway Ministries, we want the same. We want to be united with one. We don't want any more hindrances. And we want to get through those things that have totally polluted our minds to the point that we hate ourselves. And if we hate ourselves, what's that mean for those around us? And that the great commandment that the Lord Jesus Christ gave us was to love God, love our neighbors, we love ourselves. And the divine order of that is to love God, love ourselves, so that we can love our neighbors. The Beatitudes, Matthew 5, verse 3 through 9. The Beatitudes that the Lord has bestowed onto us, the very first sermon that he ever gave, the Sermon on the Mount, is so full of the message of the kingdom. The very first one, Matthew 5, 3. Those who are poor in spirit, theirs is the kingdom of heaven. When we know how destitute, how bankrupt we are in our spiritual man, our soul and body are paying for that. That it's through Christ, the knowledge of Christ, that we were crucified with Christ. I am no longer poor in spirit. I have this truth. I have this reality. My soul and body start to prosper. My soul and my health prosper. If you're looking for success, saints, that's what it looks like. Isn't that beautiful? So in the gates of Nehemiah, I know that, um, well, before I do that, let me just re recap again. The kingdom message, rediscovering the kingdom, the gates of Nehemiah, Hebrews chapter 6, verse 1 and 2. So Nehemiah 3, harmonized with Hebrews 6, verse 1 and 2. You can do your own study and follow along with this teaching. Going from generational curses to generational blessings, powerful Desire to be united, uniting the body of Jesus Christ is a booklet that I put together, a teaching, study guide. The fifth area that all these four will lead to also is a study of the book of Revelation. To understand those segments, to put yourself, ourselves in a clear clarity of mind, the book of Revelation will just, the revelations will flow. A greater understanding of the marvelous book that so many people have been fearful of. And so many people say, well, you just can't understand that. No, it's there for us to understand. Beautiful, isn't it? So with that, I want to go into um, the gates of Nehemiah. And we already know that um, in the many things that I've put forth scripturally, uh, again, uh, if we turn to Philippians 3.20, um, we want to understand uh, what Paul was saying, that we are citizens of heaven. So let's just read that verbatim. Philippians 3 verse 20. For our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, In our minds, where these thought processes take place, Satan is doing everything in his power to make us feel lesser, that we're not worthy. I see it, saints, as I evangelize and bring forth this word, all the ones that I meet, men, women, young, old, doesn't matter, a very high percentage of, of believers hold themselves in low self-esteem. And I'm not here. I mean, I was pounded for sins in my life for so long, even to this day. And it's not about dwelling on the sin. It's knowing that everything I did, past, present, or future, is under the blood of Jesus Christ. The message of the blood, the cross, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ is so important today, saints. What Jesus did by performing the will of God in his life, in his journey, that his purpose was to preach the kingdom. We already read that. And part of that purpose was to go to the cross, that he would be resurrected. And the Holy Spirit that resurrected him is resurrecting us right now. Because I know many people are starting to get revelations. I know, I know you are at this point of contact, this point of the message. 
So in understanding that the kingdom of God is, 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 is it just looks like the gates of Nehemiah. Now I know my editor will be putting up a picture of, of, the, of the outer border walls of Jerusalem, of Nehemiah's time. And what you have in the top, the top portion, and what you do is when you go through the gates, when you flow spiritually through this message, you're going to go counterclockwise to that map. And the very top gate, the very first one we enter into is the Sheep Gate. Now, I'm not going to spend much time on the saints. This is just an introduction. I'm going to go into deeper, deeper uh, revelations and teachings in the, in the next segments of, the, of this uh, YouTube uh, Truth Seekers TV. And as part of Gateway Ministries, those that would want to join us <laughs> physically, uh, you're more than welcome to. What we do is we go over these things over and over again because, the, as an example, the Sheep Gate is those who hear His voice. As for myself... As for Peter, as for so many others, they heard this voice call them. And they said, yes, Lord, come in. I may not understand it totally, but yes, Lord, come in. We, we allowed the Holy Spirit, we lowered Jesus Christ into our hearts. And now we say, Jesus is Lord. By the Holy Spirit, Jesus is Lord. Meaning, Jesus is my master. And the gate right beside the sheep gate is called the fish gate. And many of us, when we came through the sheep gate, we couldn't wait to tell the whole world we got born again. I know there's many that are watching this right now that are nodding their heads. Hallelujah. Yes, I did. And that only goes for so long, saints. Then we start to see some things. We start to understand some things about ourselves because the next gate after the sheep and the fish gate is the old gate. It's at the old gate that we get introduced to 2 Corinthians 5. If you turn there real quickly, just back a bit. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17. And I use this scripture, both Galatians 2.20, I've been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17. Harmonize these scriptures together. Because when we get to the old gate, we're going to go into the valley. The, the sheep and the fish work together. The old and the valley work together. Okay? So when you come to the old gate, you're going to see something in you that has to go. And saints, we have the grace of God. And I've seen things happen miraculously. I've seen healings, myself personally, instantaneously. But there's things that have lingered in my mind that have kept my body in a state that it shouldn't be. And it's not God doing it. It's my participation with sin that's doing it. And I have the grace of God. Yes, I do. But God forbid I continue in sin because of it. So when we get to the old gate, we, we are introduced to Scripture, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And as we pass through the old gate, we venture into the valley. Yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil. For your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Jesus is right alongside of us when we go through the valley. And it's in the valley that things are going to grow. This knowledge of being a new creation is going to come to pass. Because at the end of the valley, we meet the dung, the refuse gate, where we dump off those things, generational curses, things imparted to us from families well gone. Places of unforgiveness. I know many who are unforgiving of those who have been dead for 5, 10, 15, 20 years. Living a life of unforgiveness towards them. They love the Lord. They go to Sunday mornings. They praise the Lord. But deep in their hearts, they are unforgiving of certain people. We drop that unforgiveness off, that bitterness. We leave it at the dung gate because the next gate that meets us after that is the fountain and the water gate. It's where we get introduced to the Holy Spirit and the Word of God like never before. Because right after the fountain and water gate comes the east gate, which is the resurrection gate. It is the knowledge we have that the rapture is going to happen or that I could drop dead at any minute now. And when I face Jesus, when my spirit man comes before Jesus, I am so excited to hear him say, well done, my good and faithful servant. And the only way I could have done that is because of what he did on the cross. There is nothing I can do. My righteousness is a filthy rag. My faith is a filthy rag. Anything of Dave Brumel is a filthy rag. I could only get to see Jesus say to me, well done, my good and faithful servant, is because I knew the Christ in me. And the Christ in me was activated. Because God forbid, he says... Depart from me, I never knew you. The east gate is the resurrection gate. Jesus is going to come after seven years of great tribulation on this earth. You go to the study of the book of Revelation, it's all there. It's all laid out verse by verse. We're going to ride with him. We're going to rule and reign on this earth for a thousand years. Because right after the east gate is the tenth gate. It's called the inspection gate. Because we are not afraid to look at ourselves in the mirror of this word. Say, okay, Lord, what is it in me? Do I have to go back to the old gate? Do I have to go back to the valley? You read the word of God when you learn about Paul and Peter and so many others, that at the height of their ministries, they had to go back into the valley. They had to go back and learn something. I'll be going through all that, saints, in the days to come. 
as this, as this uh, teaching commences. So those are the ten gates of Nehemiah. Now Hebrews 6, verse 1 and 2, if you just turn there quickly, I incorporate uh, that scripture alongside of this teaching because they harmonize so well together. And I'm not going to, again, I'm not going to go into detail. I'm just going to bring it forth. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 1 and 2. Therefore, leaving the discussions of the elementary principles of Christ, getting off the milk and getting to the meat, let us go on to perfection. See, saints, we can be perfected. Not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works is the first area we talk about. We need to repent from dead works. And of faith towards God. Increasing our faith, saints, is the second area. Of the doc doctrine of baptisms, plural. Baptisms. There's three of them that we're going to go into. Of laying on of hands, the fourth area. Before we can lay on, lay on, lay on our hands, the first three areas. Do the pr people that we're going to be praying for have that knowledge? Repentance from dead works. I want to lay hands and pray for everybody. But I also am encouraged by the Lord to be led of His Holy Spirit to lovingly tell that person the truth, including myself. I have people around me. I have mentors that tell me, David, you're going this way. You're leaning this way or you're leaning that way. If they can tell me how good I am, they got, they got to be able to correct me, saints. I'm no good to anybody if I'm not correctable. We have to be correctable, saints. So we have repentance, repentance from dead works. We're going to learn what good works are. We have uh, the, uh, the, 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 the faith towards God, understanding what faith truly is. The doctrine of baptism, laying on of hands. Of the resurrection of the dead, the Holy Spirit, how the Holy Spirit does such a thing. And the last one is of eternal judgment. That we judge ourselves now. This all coincides. See, the, 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 the eternal judgment portion is, is lined up with the East Gate and, as an example, the East Gate and the, uh, the uh, inspection gate. That we're inspecting ourselves on a daily basis. I die daily. Why? Because I'm going to be judged for everything I do. At the Great White Throne of Judgment. Book of Revelations will show you these things. So without going into too much detail, you can see how exciting it is to see this word come and lay hold of us, renewing our minds that we are thinking on the things and building a foundation of love through the word of God to help ourselves so we can go out and help others. Quickly go to Matthew 7. Love this scripture. It's helped me a lot. And I just love sharing saints. Matthew 7, verse 1. Judge not that you be not judged. I've judged many people. For with what judgment you judge, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. What you sow, you will reap. And why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye, but do not consider the plank in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me remove the speck from your eye and look, a plank is in your own eye. Hypocrite. First remove the plank from your own eye and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. This is a basis, foundational scripture for Gateway Ministries. That we all look within ourselves, judging ourselves accordingly to get rid of the hockey sticks in our own eye. So we can gently look after the eyes of those put before us in divine appointments to see the speck removed from their eye. It's love. I love it. I love it. I love ministry. I love being able to serve. But to do it in a way that is not judgmental, but telling each other the truth in love. I've been so blessed at this time in my life, after many years of ministry, that I have people around me who do have my back. And in having my back, they're not afraid to speak up when they see me doing something that is detrimental to the cause. The fourth area that we go into is understanding our generational blessings. Again, I won't go into too much detail. Going into our generational blessings, we learn how to operate as one adopted into the king's family. 
And that again, it's the Christ in us. Knowing Jesus Christ in us is such an imperative message today. The blood of Jesus, yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Love covers all sin. Love casts out all fear. Wow. To position ourselves. Those are the blessings that take us from the curse. Blessing means that we have the benefits of heaven within our lives and there's evidence. A curse means that those benefits are lessened. It's that simple. I'm not trying to simplify the, the detrimony of it. I'm just saying to understand it. To be positioned to understand the power in the blessing. Matthew 5. Let's go to Matthew 5. We're right there anyway. I already talked about it earlier. <clears throat> Excuse me, the Beatitudes. Jesus is about to speak, or he is speaking, the Sermon on the Mount. Matthew 5, verse 3, which I already exposed. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. These are the Beatitudes. This is the, the culture of one who knows they're in the kingdom. See, those who are baptized in water, John 3, Jesus explains to Nicodemus, those who are born of water, those who are baptized of water, full immersion, they can see the kingdom. They will be hungry to see the kingdom. I want to know the kingdom. To see the kingdom is to know the kingdom. Those who are born of the Spirit, the second baptism, they've entered the kingdom. It's when we start to expose the kingdom of God. In the darkest of moments, when somebody has hurt you so bad, but all you give back to them is love. Love. I love you. I love you too much to be angry. I love you too much to go and talk behind your back. I love you too much to complain. And saints, I'm going to tell you this right now. If you're complaining, you're going to stay in the training. You want to get promoted out of the training, saints. And at Gateway Ministries, we help each other do that. We're all training for the reigning. We know that. All these little, all these little catchwords you know, we can use. I just don't want them to be cliches. Because there's so much power in those words. We're here to get ready, saints. We're here to prepare. And there's many with ministries that are preparing through the abundance of water and food, and that's awesome. But are we preparing spiritually within our minds to stand amongst the catastrophes and say, there is a much better way. His name is Jesus Christ. It is the kingdom of God. And even in that darkness, we can still be renewed in the spirit of our minds that our soul and body would benefit. And as our soul and body benefits, those around us, their spirit and soul and body are going to benefit. There's people that I love so much right now. And I know that Satan goes after the weaker vessels. And I could lay my life down for those people, I would. But at this point, I'm not called to. I'm called to preach and teach. And where there's pain, go out and minister to somebody. Where there's pain in your life, saints, start to praise the Lord. Let your mind be cut up. Stop thinking and start thanking Thank Him for everything. Thank Him for faithfully the things that you don't even know are coming yet. Thank Him and thank Him. Praise Him. Thanking the Lord is praise. It's worship. And I know I'm speaking to somebody right now. I'm speaking to myself. Everything I say and do here, saints, I am so preaching to myself. I, I watch these. I play them back because I know I'm going to get something to God's glory as He works through this vessel. It is such an honor and a privilege to be speaking to both you now and those later. Because I know there's a fulfillment in these YouTube messages that they will be here once we're gone. And those left behind, especially the study of the book of Revelation, those that are watching this right now, find those teachings. Find them. For the great multitude will be caught up. Those left behind are known as the great multitude. They will be caught up. I don't want to get, I don't want to get off on a tangent here saying it's just I'm moving in the spirit to encourage everyone that's watching this right now. Wow, oh, praise God. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Meek means that you know you have authoritative power in you, but it's under control. That's why faithfulness, meekness, and self-control are the last three of the fruit of the Spirit. The first, love, joy, and peace, is what we have with God. The second in the middle is patience, kindness, goodness, is what we have for brother on brother. Sister on sister, brother to sister. Can you be patient? Well, can you be kind and good while being patient? There's a lot of anger and rage out there right now, saints. Satan has gone into the minds of so many beautiful saints of God, and the only thing that's come forth is anger and rage, confusion, pain, suffering. It's it's it knows no boundaries. It's 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 borderline insanity. 
as I cry out in this message to see those come out of such a thing. You know there's grace, you know there's mercy, but you're so tired of living the way you're living. Well, I honestly believe through this word that God has given us an answer. He's given us a blueprint, a solution, a remedy. It's taking back control of our minds. For he says, those blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. So in your time, your span on this earth, in practicing meekness, you will reign with the Lord for a thousand years, is what that scripture means. There are prerequisites, saints. I, I'm, not the, I'm not the one with bringing bad news. I'm telling you, there are things that we are called to do. Many are called, few are chosen. Why? Because the called, we're called to do a work, to do a good work. There's bad work, there's good work. We want to do the good work. Faith without works is dead. Faith without good works is dead. The wages of sin is death. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. We don't want that. We want life. So he's given us all these things that we can focus on and bring forth and put within ourselves to help those around us. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. And it's not the things that we want. It's the things that he knows we need. In all righteousness, in all right standing, God is going to give us the things that we hunger and thirst for. <laughs> first, we've got to hunger and thirst for the right things, saints. Satan would want our flesh to be looked after. Because as long as our flesh is looked after, he's looked after. No, no, no. My spirit man... The Christ in me is going to get from heaven everything that Christ in me needs. If Jesus needed a place to minister, God brought him to it. If he needed a donkey and a colt to go in to Jerusalem, he got it. If he needed all the fish and the loaves of bread, he got it. And we're no different. You're going to cast a demon out, you got it. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is in us. That's the message of the kingdom. That's the message of the gates. That's the message of healing. That's the message of the generational blessings over the curse. I don't want the curse. I want the blessing. He gives us this diagram. He shows us how to do it. Blessed are, are, blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. What is it you need right now, saints? Go and do it to somebody. Go and do it to somebody. You get it. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. And sisters, you can include yourselves in that. In knowing all this, saints, we go into the fifth and last area, which is uniting the body of Jesus Christ. Uniting the body of Jesus Christ. Let's go to John 17. I already talked about it earlier. Just bring the scripture forth. I am a huge, huge supporter of seeing the body of Christ united. And yes, saints, there has been moments in my life where I have not just uh, burned a bridge, but I've blown them up. But as we learn in 2 Corinthians 5, 17 and 18, that God is in the reconciliation business. I don't like to say it that way, but that's what he does. And as we humble ourselves under his mighty hand, he will exalt us. And I can't think of a greater exaltation than to hold hands with those that I either had hate towards or loved them in a way that I just didn't love them correctly. And I'm waiting for those moments to come that only God could do as we submit to him. And I know it's coming, saints. The, sadly, the, the calamities on this earth are going to lead us to it. It's a whole other teaching. But Let's look at John 17. Let's start at verse 7. Now they have known that all things which you have given me are from you. For I have given to them the words which you have given me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came forth from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I do not pray for the world, but for those whom you have given me, for they are yours. And all mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I am glorified in them. Praise be to God. Verse 11, now I am no longer in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to you, Holy Father, keep through your name those whom you have given me, that you may be one 
that, that they may be one as we are. It's the first time he says that. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in your name. Those whom you gave me, I have kept. And none of them is lost except the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. We know who that was. But now I come to you, and these things I speak in the world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. No matter how dark it is, saints, love, joy, peace. Why? Because we know God. And I can say this, saints, I can say this and teach it and teach and teach it. There is such a, a call for a divine revelation. There's nothing on this earth. There's no one that could have laid hands on me. There's no one that could have touched me. There's nothing of the world, nothing of entertainment that could bring me the joy that I could, that I could ever compare it to getting a revelation of the blood of Jesus Christ and what he shed for me. And that because he did that, he said, David, now go enjoy yourself. Gateway Ministries is all about joy. I suffered for too long, saints. Didn't think I was worthy of a blessing. I will serve you, Lord, and I'll serve you in the darkest of ways. If I have to live in poverty, I will. What a, that is a satanic idea. We have all the richness, richness of heaven. And I'm not going to compare myself with the guy who has a bigger yacht or a guy who has greener grass. No. It's all spiritual, saints. It's all spiritual. Success, and the success we look for is the fact that when we stand before the Lord, he says, well done, my good and faithful servant. I know you. That's success, saints. Not your bank account, not how much you give to the church, not even your gift, not even your gift can compare to having the knowledge and the joy of eternal life because of what Jesus did on the cross. Don't ever forget the giver. That's the kingdom message. That's the unity message right there. Imagine where the body of Christ will be if we would put down all our material things. Religion wants material items to be exposed. It's satanic. It's demonic. Those of the kingdom will know that the most important anything on this earth is people. Because their spirit man is eternal. It's either eternal hell or eternal heaven. And we have an opportunity to tell the whole world that. That's what he's saying here. Verse 14, I have given them your word and the world has hated them because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. It's a good place to be, saints. That's not a bad thing. We rejoice in that infirmity, that the world hates us because of who we are in Christ. I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. Praise God. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world, and for their sakes, I sanctify myself that they also may be sanctified by the truth. I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, that they all may be one. Here's the key thing, saints, that they all may be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. And the glory which you gave me, I have given them, that they may be one just as we are one. Wow. A conversation between Jesus and God, and all he can talk about is how he wants us to be one. So at Gateway Ministries, we are looking, digging, helping, assisting, one soul at a time, that, that we would be united with ourselves first in Christ, and that would expand out to those around us. Praise be to God. Now let me close with 1 John 5. And again, saints, the next time you see me, I will be going into the depth of, because I've already covered, I've already covered the kingdom of God and the Lord's Prayer. I coupled those two messages together. I've already done a study of the book of Revelation. But now, in the order of this introduction to Gateway Ministries, what you'll see on YouTube, and I have booklets and we meet uh, uh, in a location here in Newcastle, Ontario, Canada, uh, Gateway Ministries meeting, and it's it's small right now, but we are growing and we're building a foundation of love. So as we grow, it'll be a firm foundation that it will not be knocked over. The gates of hell will not prevail. The counselors of hell will not prevail against it. And so um, we are building in in scripture. We're building in in, in literature to to explain to people what we're all about. That, that God is, is God Almighty, El Shaddai. Jesus is our Lord and Savior, our King, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, and that we're the royal family. 
brought in by what Jesus did on the cross. And that Jesus is the way, the truth, and life. John 14, 6. Jesus is the way, the truth, and life. No one can get to the Father except through Jesus Christ. It is that powerful. So let me close. Let me sum everything up with John 5, verse 19. The Apostle John wrote this. He says, We know that we are of God, and the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. And we know that the Son of God has come and has given us an understanding that we may know him who is true, and we are in him who is true, in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Mar marinate your thoughts in the scripture saints it's an agreement we come into agreement just as we agree on john 14 6 we can also agree on this scripture we know that we are of god and the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one he wants into our minds he wants into our thoughts but here's a thought and we know see knowing is a thought knowing means that you walk out your day knowing that satan can't come in because i know this truth about god and we know that the Son of God has come and has given us what? An understanding, a, a knowing, a thought, an understanding that we may know him who is true and we are in him who is true. There's a thought. Capture this over and over and over and over. Repeat this, repeat this, repeat this. Satan will not stand a chance in your mind. That we may know him who is true and we are in him who is true in his son, Jesus Christ, this is the true God and eternal life. Hallelujah. All of us, we, us, together, plural, standing arm to arm, holding hands, breaking down these barriers, these walls. The gates of Nehemiah will show us this. I get so excited, saints. I'm just going to close now and, uh, and, just, and just bring to pass uh, all that you've heard here in this segment. And... Uh, I just wanted to get it out there to get uh, an understanding of Gateway Ministries, what, we, what we're being led of the Holy Spirit to do, uh, what God has called us to do. And uh, again, it's the message of the kingdom, the kingdom of God and heaven, the gates of Nehemiah, Hebrews chapter 6, verse 1 and 2, incorporated together with many other scriptures, foundational, going from a generational curse to understanding our generational blessings, which leads to unity of the body of Christ. And already on this YouTube uh, channel, the Truth Seekers, I call it a channel, but Truth Seekers TV, you're going to find the study of the book of Revelation. You're all going to find the kingdom message in there, embedded in there. And the Lord's Prayer, which is our, it's our anthem as kingdom citizens on this earth. I get so excited, saints. I am so moved and flowing and just being overwhelmed by the Holy Spirit right now as I get ready to close. So, Father, I thank you for this moment. I thank you for this time. I thank you for the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. We thank you, Jesus, as our mediator, as our guide, through your Holy Spirit, that all this is going to come together, Lord. And you will be glorified. And you will get a body without spot or wrinkle. Those that are listening right now are being moved by the Holy Spirit to go into your word, to seek those things, Lord. To settle their minds. The Satan would not stand a chance any longer in, in distracting their minds. I declare the blood, the cross, the resurrection of Jesus Christ over all of us for all protection and provision as we go our way now, as we go into the world, bringing a truth like no other. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. I'm Pastor David. This is Truth Seekers TV. This is Gateway Ministries. And the next segment that's going to come before you is the segment on the gates of Nehemiah and the healing segments that Christ would have us follow. It's not legalism. It's totally freedom in the spirit to do the things that the Lord would have us to do. Again, it's been a pleasure and an honor to be with you today. Be blessed. Be blessed. Be blessed. In Jesus' mighty name, be blessed. Bye now.